Hello everyone, this is Rowdy's Blog, and I'm starting a new segment for my channel called Top Comic Books of the Week. Now in this segment, I would mostly name comic books that I have been reading over the past few years, and have become my favorite comics of all time. So basically, any comic books that I pick out per week will be comic books that are not only recently made, but also classic comic books such as the Dark Phoenix Saga and Days of Future Past. Also, most of the comics I pick out for the weeks will be in trade paperback format since I find it easier to review comic books if they are in trade paperback format. However, there will be some weeks where I would have a single issue comic book to pick from if the story holds my interest. I will also try to pick out a wide variety of comics that are not just from Marvel and DC, but also from independent comics like Dark Horse and IDW. So here are my top four comic book picks for this week. Comic book pick number one, Astonishing X-Men Gifted Volume 1, written by Joss Whedon, artwork by John Cassidy, published by Marvel Comics, Era 2000s. Now, I have actually reviewed this on a separate video, but I just would like to mention this volume to anyone interested in reading some good X-Men comics. As you have noticed, I love Joss Whedon's run on Astonishing X-Men, and what volume best introduced X-Men fans to the new world of the X-Men than the first volume Gifted? Gifted was basically about the X-Men discovering that a mutant cure that could cure all the mutants of their powers was being created, and they tried to go to the research center to find out more about the mutant cure. However, they soon discovered that a more sinister force is at hand in regard to the mutant cure, and the X-Men must stop this evil force once and for all. Also, watch out for the return of one of the most beloved X-Men who is believed to be dead. What I loved about this volume was the fact that Joss Whedon wrote each X-Men character extremely well. Whenever I read the dialogue from Cyclops or from Kitty Pride, it feels like they are those exact characters that we have read before, and not as totally different people. I also love the witty dialogue that Joss Whedon provides for the characters, especially for Kitty Pryde and Emma Frost, and it really gave each character personalities instead of making them so stoic. The plotline about the mutant cure was something I never would have expected to show in any X-Men story. Joss Whedon did a brilliant job of developing the storyline as he showed how all the mutants felt about this cure and how some mutants were suspicious about this new cure, while also revealing some shocking surprises involving the characters in an impressive way. John Cassidy's artwork is just simply brilliant as the characters are drawn realistically and beautifully, especially with the scenes of the characters having their faces being shown in the shadows, and you can see the dark coloring of the characters' faces whenever they're having dark thoughts about a situation. Comic book pick number two, Lock and Key, Welcome to Lovecraft, Volume 1, written by Joe Hill, artwork by Gabriel Rodriguez, published by IDW Comics, Era 2000s. Now, I will admit that I wasn't aware of this, the hype this comic was getting when it first came out because I didn't hear about this comic until recently when one of my friends from Goodreads wrote a fantastic review on this volume. So I was like, I'll check it out. I'm happy to say that I'm so glad that I checked the series out. But first things first, let's summarize this story. Basically, this volume is about how three kids named Tyler, Kenzie, and Bode witnessed the brutal murder of their father by two strangers and how the whole family, including the mother who survived the ordeal, decided to move to Lovecraft to get away from the horrible memories of their father's murder. Once at Lovecraft, though, the three kids would soon discover that there were hidden secrets at their new home, and how several keys that were located in their new house would open doors to a new world. I must admit, I was really amazed by this volume. I never would have thought that I would have read a comic book that had so much depth to the characters and the situations they were involved in, while also providing a horror mystery story in the mix. Joe Hill has done a fantastic job of portraying how the Law kids are handling the murder of their father, such as Tyler blaming himself for his father's murder, Kenzie not knowing about who she truly is, and Bo being very young, not quite understanding the severity of the situation. It's obvious that the murder of their father had greatly affected the Law kids, and it shows in a very well-developed way that really made me feel sad for these characters. I also love the way that Joe Hill makes the supernatural suspense in this story without really interrupting the main storyline of the Lock Kids trying to deal with their father's murder, which makes the story much more interesting to read about. Gabrielle Rodriguez's artwork is awesome as it brings a gloomy tone to the story as the artwork is full of dark coloring that makes the artwork look dark. I also love the way that Gabrielle Rodriguez drew the supernatural going on in the story as we see images of characters turning to ghosts before our very eyes. Comic book pick number three, Frey, written by Joss Whedon, artwork by Carl Moline and Annie Owens, published by Dark Horse Comics, era 2000s. Now, as you have noticed, I'm a huge fan of Joss Whedon's work, and I have read many of his works and have enjoyed most of them. Here's one of my favorite reads from Joss Whedon, and it's called Frey. 
Frey is basically about a young girl named Malika Frey, who is a street thief that performs risky jobs to earn money. One day, however, Malika meets up with a demon named Urkon, who tells Malika that she is from a long line of vampire slayers, and that the dystopian city of Manhattan is under attack by vampires, or lurks as they call them, and only Malika can save the city from the vampires. I was really impressed with this story as Joss Whedon really made the character Malika Frey really stand now in this story. I love the backstory about Malika Frey she always feels guilty about what happened to her brother who was killed doing one of her heists and that caused a big divide between her and her older sister Erin who happens to be a cop. It provided so much depth to Malika's character as she's not shown as one sided street thief who is only interested in making money but as a sympathetic yet tough protagonist who suffer over her brother's death and turn to a life of crime. It's also surprising that Joss Whedon sort of based Malika Frey off of Buffy Summers from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, since both female protagonists fight vampires. But Malika Frey still stands out as a character, and is shown to be a grittier version of Buffy Summers. Carl Malines and Annie Owens' artwork is fantastic as it truly captures the dark and gritty city of Manhattan. And I love the way that Malika looks like a punk girl with blue hair that has pink tips at the end, and purple lipstick that makes her look tough. The images of the vampires were also well done as the vampires looked threatening with pale gray skin and yellow eyes. Comic book pick number four, Batman Year One, written by Frank Miller, all worked by David Massolini and Richmond Lewis, published by DC Comics, era 1980s. I will admit that Batman Year One was the first Batman comic I've ever read, unless you include the little mini comic book that was based off the Batman animated movie Mask of the Phantasm, and it was one comic I thought I thoroughly enjoyed. Basically, this comic is a retelling of the origins of Batman, as Bruce Wayne deals with his first year as being Batman, while the second half of the story focuses on Commissioner James Gordon's first year as being lieutenant on the police force before he became a commissioner. If you are a new comic book reader and you wanted to get into Batman, the Batman Year One is the perfect place to start, even though Batman existed way before the 1980s. Frank Miller had done an excellent job of retelling Batman's origin story without really changing most of his origin story. I also love the way that Frank Miller went into detail about Batman's first year when and all the struggles he had, especially with the public viewing him as the bad guy the first time around. I also love the side story with James Gordon and how he was the first lieutenant of the police force before he became a commissioner, and it really brought out such depth to his character. David Massolini's and Richmond Lewis artwork was fantastic, as it not only has that classic art style that you would find in the 80s when characters looking a bit simplistic, but the color done by Richmond Lewis greatly shows the intensity in some scenes, such as the scene where James Gordon is attacked by hitmen, and you can see the red coloring all over the characters' faces. Well, that's my top comic books of the week. I would highly recommend these comics to both new and old time fans of comic books. And if you are a new comic book fan or if you want to find a comic book that is great for reading, then feel free to check out my top comic books videos in the near future for more comic books to choose from. Also, since these are just the short reviews of the comics I have picked out for each week, if you want me to do a more detailed review on these comics, then feel free to comment below and I'll see what I can do about it. This is Rabbit's Vlog and I'll see you later.